Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Hybrid Unlimited. This is Hayden Bow. Today, Jeff Tamborello and I sit down with John Dorsey. Some of you might know him as Goob on Instagram. Uh, John is a coach in the fitness industry, uh, and it, in addition to that, he has a platform uh, on Instagram that he mostly uses to expose fitness frauds. Uh, to be completely honest with you guys, I was a non-believer at the beginning. Uh, but after looking at all of his videos and all of the good he's done in exposing people using fake images, edited images to sell products, uh, people who are engaging in inappropriate conduct um, as people who are in positions of power, all sorts of things like that, uh, he is the man who is going after them and exposing them. He also has a law degree, which is very interesting. I don't know if that helps uh, in his ability to make the videos, but it certainly helps in his ability to know what he can say and not say <laughs> without getting uh, himself in trouble. Um, it's a really interesting conversation, um, especially for me as somebody, like I said, who is a non-believer. I've since been converted. Uh, I think he's fighting a good fight, and I think you guys will think the same. Uh, after you listen to this episode as always make sure you screenshot this episode while you're listening throw it up in your stories on social media tag me tag jeff tag steppy tag hybrid unlimited and you will automatically be entered in a draw to potentially win some hybrid legacy brand apparel which is the official apparel of the hybrid unlimited podcast as well as hybrid performance method as a whole while you're at it check us out on hybridstrengthcoach.com that's where we sell all of our programs we do everything from strongman to weightlifting to powerlifting everything in between general fitness crossfit all that good stuff check us out and sit back relax enjoy another episode of hybrid unlimited all right brother well thanks for being on um man we got so much to go over i'll be honest with you at first i wasn't a true believer it took it took some work from jeff jeff's a big fan and uh well now now i'm part of the goob team um but yeah, lots of questions. Um, just because a lot of our listeners might not be familiar with you yet, uh, I want to get the full picture of who you are, how you got into the industry uh, to begin with, and then ultimately how you got onto this platform where I became aware of you through through these videos that you're now pretty much known for. So to circle back, let's start at the beginning. How did you get sure. first involved in the fitness industry in general and training and all of that, the coaching, all that stuff? Uh, well, I mean, I've been training for, you know, over a decade now. I remember I woke up one morning and I was like, wow, I'm disgusting. And uh, <laughs> I joined a gym at that evening. And then I just literally, I never stopped. I was like a video game guy. Like I RuneScape, World of Warcraft, you know, CSGO, that type of shit. And I was like, wow, this is actually pretty much just like that, just in real life. It's kind of fun, you know, you level up all the time. And and uh, so I, I trained for years and years. I started competing in about 2014, 2015. So I was about five years into, you know, my fitness journey and all that. And uh, I went to law school. I competed through law school. And then uh, I started coaching people while I was in law school because I needed a little extra cash. And uh, it kind of turned into a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. I was like, I'll get 10 or 15 clients and I'll be able to pay my bills and that'll be cool. And like 46 people hired me the first week I ever opened my doors to do it. Huh. And I was like, okay. I had a big presence on Reddit. If you guys are familiar with Reddit bodybuilding, yeah. that was kind of where I started. And so I posted my shit on there and there weren't very many people that were bodybuilders on there. It wasn't like now where it's like super saturated. There was like 10 of us. And uh, I'm still good friends with all the guys that started on, on Reddit body. But do you guys know KC Wilson? I don't. No. He, uh, he has a cookie company. He's a body. He just went pro. He's a classic physique bodybuilder, but to troll, he crossed over into men's physique mm. for nationals. And uh, he won in men's physique, but got crushed in classic. It was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what, what's the distinction for people who might not know the difference between those two categories? Uh, one wears board shorts and the other wears like bodybuilding trunks. So right. one's like the pretty boy class and the other's like the more muscular class. And he joined the pretty boy class just to joke. And ended up winning the whole thing, which was just kind of funny. That's you know, that's that's the one where you don't have to have legs, right? Because you're wearing the board shorts. 
Yeah, um, and the funny thing is, he has these crazy big legs, and he was like stuffed into these like tight ass shorts. It was so funny. I was laughing my ass <laughs> off. But uh, yeah, he's from way back then. I, I know all these guys from you know Reddit back in the day. Hmm. And uh, what about six, seven months ago, I started doing these videos, just exposing people because I, I mean, you guys have been in the industry a minute. You just sort of pick up things, you hear things, you see things, and they just all sort of stay here. And I've been you know at this for a decade now, and I was like, you know what? It's time to talk my shit. And I just hmm. started doing it back in March and. I just thought it would be like, yeah, you know, I'll do this for a few weeks and then everybody, I'll go back to posting clients and shit, but I just, I haven't been able to stop. I was like, damn, you know, you, you turn one rock over and like 40 cockroaches yeah. scatter and then you go turn yeah. a bigger rock over and there's 400 cockroaches and people are in my inbox all the time. They're sending me shit. They're telling me this, they're telling me that. Cause now people look at my page like, yo, let's go to this guy. You know, I know something. Hey, I get 400 DMs a day of crazy shit. Just the craziest shit you never want to read. It's like, wow, they did that. <laughs> is that overwhelming or does that make your job easier now? Because you have all this like basically free content shoved into your face all the time. Literally. Uh, I'm, I'm good friends with, you know, if you know who Joey Swole is. And he uh -huh. is the same where he just gets there. They tag him. It's like the bat signal. Like when he when somebody makes a post and it's bad. His all the tags in the comments, Joey Swole, Joey Swole, Joey Swole. So he just opens up his phone and goes, Oh, there's one. And my shit's kind of like that too now. But people well, DM it because they don't really want to. I'm, I'm real harsh in my videos and they don't want to kind of publicly tell anybody that they're sending it to me. But I get snitches in my inbox. I love, I love my snitches. I love yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you recently went on the assault back against some of the reddit family in the gym snark uh <laughs> cesspool um tell me about that i don't know are you allowed to, to reveal your tricks of how you figured out who these people are of course i would love to because i want you motherfuckers to do the same <laughs> thing when somebody's clowning you online get after it <laughs> so uh if anybody's watching this and you don't know there's gym shark which is a, a good brand and then there's Jim Snark, S-N-A-R-K. And I want to differentiate those because when I did the first video on Jim Snark, everybody was tagging me in Jim Shark stuff. And they were like, <laughs> screw this brand. There are a bunch of fakes and phonies and they say mean things about women. And I was like, oh, oh man. no. I mean, maybe they do, but not in this video, okay? <laughs> so there's a Reddit board called Jim Snark and it's all of these angry people. They'll take influencers, you know, they take you for example and post a, something that you're doing in your life and they find some problem with it and it's never it's always petty stupid stuff and they have these anonymous profiles and uh i don't know uh, there's a girl who was a client of mine brianna terry who oh i know her uh, well. went to usa you know, you know with me she got fourth i believe at, at usa is just an incredible athlete oh, yeah. top five her first time at it national she won an overall in dallas mm. and um they made a post about her and it was like this nasty ass post and i saw it and i was like all right, not in my house. Mm -hmm. So I dug through this girl's profile and sometimes they'll leave little artifacts behind where you can link it to their identity. So for instance, this girl's posting on an anonymous profile, but she's posting screenshots of an Instagram. And all you gotta do is kind of look at the like by, it'll say, you know, when you post an Instagram screenshot, it says like by, and it'll have two names, usually sometimes one. That one or two names are somebody that you follow that you interact with frequently. So if you get that name and it's a smaller account, you're usually in. Find a profile picture, scroll, and then you're there. Uh, there's a ton of different ways to do it. Sometimes these people will have deleted clues to their identity. There's a website where you can put a person's Reddit username in, look at all the shit that they've ever deleted, filter by deleted, and then usually you're right there. Oh that's God. how I found most of these people, which is sort by the shit they deleted. That's usually the thing that has a trick to their identity. This one girl had this big YouTube channel where she was trashing these girls, calling them all ugly and all this crazy shit. but. I hit probably five or six of those with, with videos. And now if you go to Jim Snark, they are so nice. They're so <laughs> nice. They just calmed down. I'm also Voldemort over there. Yeah. You're not allowed to say my name. Yes. You can't post about me. They will delete it immediately. They want nothing to do with me. So oh, man. I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, they, they had a, what I disliked the most about that Jim Snark thing <clears throat> was there was basically like five or six girls that they just really targeted and went after. It wasn't like, let's make fun of the industry as a whole and all the ridiculous stuff that's going on. It was like a small, it was a seemingly small group of petty people being like, I don't like Taylor Olson or I don't like so-and-so. And then just everything these girls would post, 
And sometimes it was just the most innocuous, innocent stuff. And it's just like, I, mean, I like, hate her clothes. They, they have a saying on there called BEC. And it stands for bitch eating chips. And it, it means, <laughs> uh, if you say somebody is my BEC, it means you just hate everything they do for no reason. And you're openly going to make fun of them for it. They'll post a photo. You said like Sam Taylor or Taylor Olson. Look at her just standing there. <laughs> and then in all the comments, they're like, yeah, fuck her. I hate her so much. <laughs> One girl went to her gym. I caught this girl, went to... Taylor, it was either Sam Taylor or Taylor Olson. I can't remember which one. They're the same. They, you know, they, they have a podcast together. And can't tell. They're the same, same content, same stuff. They both kill it. I can't remember which one. But she posted, I go to her gym. She's doing this. She's doing that. All this crazy shit. It turns out this girl had manufactured her entire life. She pretended to be an airline pilot online. Like, what? So I found her identity. And it wasn't just posting, you know, okay, here she is, and here's the thing, okay, ha, 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 ha. But then I did a follow-up video where I was like, she is pretending to be an airline pilot online. She worked at, like, CVS. Like, she was just a fucking nobody. And she was like, oh, you know, got done flying today and had all these crazy posts on TikTok, all these this flying uh, content that and was were the fake. Accounts, all of it was fake. Were the accounts, well, the accounts, like, of TikTok and the Instagram, at, like, her? Like, she was pretending that was her life, or she made up, like, an alias? No, she was pretending like her or the real person. She had two LinkedIn's, one real LinkedIn, one fake LinkedIn, two Facebooks, one fake, one real, and then Instagram and TikTok accounts supporting the lie that she was an airline pilot. And I don't know if you guys know anything about this, but airlines and airline pilots are a highly regulated, you know, kind of industry. Yeah. There's a website, you can go to FAA.org and you can find out tomorrow, today, within five minutes, you know, if you told me you're a pilot right now, I could figure it out in two seconds. <laughs> so, so wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not like you can show up to a pilot job interview and fake it till you make it. You're going to crash the fucking plane. What's the end goal? <laughs> I honestly, she actually went pretty far with it, though. She she did like a ride along type of thing with a pilot and filmed the whole day. Yeah. Filmed the whole day and post content from this all over the place. You know, she'd, she'd break it up, but she's wearing the same thing in this one day yeah. where she was, you know, in a cockpit of a plane. But it was like one of those, you know, pay ride along type of deals where they take you sure. out and fly you around. And so she was just filming around the whole time and she spread it out. Like she was like an influencer that's in shape. You right. know how they'll like shoot like 15 shoots in three days. And they're like, all right, I'm good for the year. Yeah. <laughs> Time to get fat again. <laughs> she pulled one of those. I was impressed, but oh, I wow. still had this but, What about the people who know her in her actual life? I would just assume look at Instagram? somebody like that has absolutely no friends. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sad instead of funny. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's oh, fair. man. Oh, That's crazy. God. So who was the first uh, person, you know, online fraud that you exposed? Her name is Saidana T. She's, like, got 200,000 followers, and she had posted uh, – she, she did, actually didn't edit the photo, but she did tricky, tricky camera lenses – so she had one that was like a normal native lens and the other was a widescreen, a wide angle lens. And she used it to take a photo of her butt showing her six week progress or something crazy like that. And I mean, you guys know, if you use the wide angle, everything in the center looks bigger and it gets stretched out to the end, right? Sure. So she took it in the same spot in her room, one with a wide angle, one with a normal phone, one with a normal uh, angle. And it looks like her ass grew like eight inches. It was like insane. You know, her waist got smaller, her ass got bigger. And so I called her out on it. I was like, why are you selling your shit with this fake ass? You know what I mean? Like, why are you, why are you doing that? She said, I, I didn't, I used the same camera angle and it turned into like a whole throwdown where I was like, all right, I'll give a thousand dollars to St. Jude, any charity of your choice. If you send me the exit data, which is like the metadata from both photos. And it, it is true that you use the same angle, the same lens, same everything which I knew wasn't possible. It's this prototype taken in the same room. And, you know, like this painting behind me would be like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> or really small or normal. And so she sends it, she's wrong. And I was like, all right, you agreed to send this money to charity. You're wrong. You could do it now. And she blocked me. Did she ever send it? No. <laughs> she didn't send it. She just blocked me. So uh, I rounded up all my crazy people and we ended up sending the money yeah. uh, on, on her behalf. It always ends up working out that way, which is cool. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> my, my people are pretty crazy, man. Which one They're was that? Crazy. Who was that that just went by? That's uh, my dog right here. Baby, can you get the dog? <laughs> He's blind and just likes to get lost and run into <laughs> things. Fair enough. <laughs> crazy. So after doing that first 
uh, post and having that first back and forth, what was it about that experience that made you be like, I just want to be in constant conflict from now on. (laughs) (laughs) Some people like to to, watch the world burn. (laughs) Honestly, it just seems exhausting. I can't handle conflict with one person, let alone like all the stuff you got going on all the time. Um, I don't know. It's, it was, it used to be a lot harder to do these videos, but now it's like, I don't know. The hardest part is just reading everybody's shit that they send me and finding a story that's credible. You know, it doesn't take, that much to record a video i can probably do it in five ten minutes you know if i have all the information ready to go if somebody points me to an account where somebody's editing i did a girl last night like i was about to go to bed and I, it was like 11 30 and i'm like ah uh, okay well this is and she was uh, in the uk or something or australia and i was like damn it's about noon for her so i'll drop this and get the fuck to bed <laughs> and so it, you know it took me 10 minutes all of her photos were edited it's not that hard to to pull them apart once you know what to look for mm. But uh, how quickly you had to do a follow up video real quick with her, right? Was it the same night or was it the next morning? <laughs> she was, I, I don't think she like knew about me or like knew, knew how this walk, you know, how this whole thing works. Yeah. So I posted a video and she's in her stories. She actually reposted my video, which was funny because <laughs> nobody ever does that. That's, I mean, that's kind of like why I'm, I'm happy to do this because the beef is never public and they never want to draw attention to me. Because think about it if I expose you for your shit, and I put it all over my wall. Are you going to try to send your people to my page? Because they're going to come running. They're going to watch that video. And then they're going to feel like they've been lied to. Mm. And then they're not your fan anymore. Right. Right. So she had so much. She posted on her story. And immediately within an hour or two realized that that was a horrible idea. Because all of her people were like, yo, wh- why is the bridge bent? Can you explain? <laughs> and then I put that uh, you know charity shit on her too. I always do that. I'm like, yo, yep. Okay, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Send me the exit data. I'll send money to whatever charity you want. And I've actually never been wrong, weirdly enough. It's kind of strange. See, but that exact point you make is what surprises me about the large corporations that you call out. Because if I were them, I would just never acknowledge this call out, right? And then I'm not going to bring all these people that follow us to like their attention to you and you know in a couple months it's like you can only post so much about one person or one company before your followers are going to be like all right dude it's been 20 videos you know yeah, it's yeah. like who's the yeah. next guy we need the next t so it's like couldn't they just not engage i mean that's the strategy to beat me either uh immediately admit it and put a nice thing out and say yeah i did it i'm gonna do better then i'm dead in the water or just ignore it. I mean, usually if you ignore it, though, I get real, I get real vicious sometimes. <laughs> but like, it, if it's like a mild ass video and you never acknowledge it, like I'm probably just gonna find something better to do. Well, I mean, we all, I think we all know. To your point, bombshells ignoring him or trying to. Yeah, no, but, but they oh, made well, a statement actually. Oh, did I miss it? Okay. Well, they didn't ignore me because they were getting bombed so much. Bomb. <laughs> that they turn their comments off and their comments are still to this day limited on all of their posts. Wow. So you can't leave a comment unless they follow you and you follow them. Oh wow. Which I mean that's probably their whole fake ass interaction to begin with, all of their paid, you know, sponsors yeah, that sure. are commenting back, best leggings ever. <laughs> but they circulated an email to anybody that has bought from them about the guy who is manufacturing information and lying about stuff oh, and how we shouldn't believe him and that that uh, you know they never use edited models and they're true to themselves. I was like, the fuck is this shit? Wow. And was that the only address to the situation that they made? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I crawled up their ass and died. So you know, I'm still there. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I got a couple more. I mean, for them, it's it's so easy because they have so many models that edit their shit. So like, what's it to me to? You know, three days from now. Okay, well, let's just you know, go through the Rolodex of their sure. fake athletes. All right, <laughs> here we go. And the headline is Bombshell Athlete Fakes Their Shit. You know, it's- <laughs> Did, uh, was Bombshell the one where there were actually women posting the unedited versions and then they were taking them and <clears throat> editing them? Yeah. Oh, that's even worse, no? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was uh, two sisters. And, and the one sister, she's a little bigger. She's, it's, it's like wellness versus bikini. Like you got the smaller sister and then the biggest, like but the super bigger in sister shape, like, like bigger because she's muscular, right? Yeah, yeah. Like she's this girl's got amazing legs, right? And they took the two sisters took the photo side by side. The ones like bikini, the ones like wellness, and 
on Bombshell's website, they made them both look bikini. They shrunk the quad on one girl. Yeah, and I'm bent like, the fence. why the fuck would you do that? All like half your market is probably wellness girls that want to look like that chick anyway. Why the fuck would you do that? It just makes no sense. No. Wow. Wow. None of it makes sense. <laughs> Has there ever been an instance where you exposed somebody like this and then felt bad about it after? One time, actually. One time. Um, and I removed the video. And it's the only video I've ever removed. Uh, and I usually don't even remove a video. But this was my bad. Um, she was not an influencer. Somebody had sent me all the screenshots of, of the profile. Uh-huh. And uh, I, don't, I rushed the video. I didn't even check. Her profile was private. I followed her and she followed me. But I didn't notice that, that she was private because I followed her. Mm-hmm. And so somebody sent me all these screenshots and I went and I looked and it was actually stage photos that she had edited. But her account was like 1,500 people. She wasn't a coach. She didn't really sell anything. She was just an insecure girl. And her edits were like horrible. Like they were just like, it was like if you got really drunk and then opened up Facetune and you're like, I'm going to make myself huge. It was, <laughs> that would probably be better than what she put out. And I did this video and these people were so mean about it to her. And she, she sends me a message and she was like, Hey, you know, I don't even expect you to do anything about this, but I'm not an influencer. My profile's private. Yeah. I edit all my stuff, but like, I'm just an insecure person. Mm-hmm. And I looked at that, like, damn, this isn't the person, you know, I, I'm, she's the influence, not the influencer. Mm-hmm. I was right. like, why the fuck am I doing this? Like this girl I just did yesterday. She coaches people, has a big platform, has sponsorships, has affiliations. So that makes sense. You know, that you're the industry. Yeah. This girl's the one that's you know, drinking from the industry. And obviously it's fucking sure. poisoned her because look at what she's doing to her shit, but she's keeping it to herself. It's private. So I, I took the video down. I, I apologized to her. I actually got her on a live and we talked about it. And then uh, I, I put up a thing. Hey, I took the video down and here's why. Okay. Well, okay. I have a, another question for you because this is one that, that originally stuck out in my mind when uh, Jeff, when I told you I was at first a non-believer and Jeff was the one who who talked me, talked some sense into me maybe. But the one, the one thing that I thought was interesting is on the other extreme. So not the influenced, but the highest level competitor influencer. And I'll tell you why I felt the way that I did at the beginning and then I'll tell you what changed my mind. Sure. And then I'd love to get your opinion on it as well. So first uh, I saw, I can't remember what her name was, I believe it was this girl that had won the Olympia uh, a couple times and you did a video on her. Uh, could be wrong. She was a really high level competitor either way, but girl has a crazy physique, completely unattainable to probably 99.9999% of people. And then she made a couple small edits to the photo. You caught it, you posted it. And then my previous knowledge of your page was, uh, you know, you want to call people out who are, basically taking advantage of the consumer and selling to them based on, you know, these unrealistic bodies they don't have. And when I looked at that one post and forgive me for not remembering the exact one, but I looked at it and I said, this person has such a ridiculous body to begin with that those little edits are something that I didn't think changed her ability to sell programs at all right? Or supplements. I was like, this is actually just probably the product of somebody who's been in the industry for a long time and has body dysmorphia and unfortunately doesn't appreciate how amazing her body actually looks right now. And it's just an insecurity that she has. Not like I'm going to deceive people to say my ass grew 10 feet when, you know, it didn't or like whatever it was. So that's why at first I was a non-believer just because of those few instances like that. What changed my mind a little bit was that I think what you're just doing is holding everybody to the same standard that deceit is deceit regardless of your intentions. I guess, you know, the, the, the phrase, the path to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Yeah. It's um, the action part. Yeah. Yeah. You've, you know, won pro shows, you've qualified for the Olympia. You don't really need to do this. And you know, on the, on the flip side, if you're trying to deceive somebody, you know, you're, you're getting the business anyway. Why, you know, what's the point? You're not going to sell 10 more programs because you since you shoot in. Now there are some coaches that will edit their clients results. I think that's really fucked up. Yeah, yeah for um, sure. And, and we know, you know, through marketing, a lot of women will end up buying a program from somebody they want to look like. It's just how it works. Men do the same thing. 
And so if you are the product, you, you go to these coaches pages and they're the product, they're not posting any clients, they're just posting themselves. And that product that you're posting had to be touched in Photoshop. You know, you're a con man at that point. You're not really selling anything real. You know, sure. Ford doesn't edit the lines and the Mustang, you know, they're not editing a couple more horsepower into that, you know, thinking you're getting something else. They'll oh. tell you the crank horsepower and not the wheel horsepower, but that's fine. We all know, <laughs> and that's the, the standard that we all understand and know and love, but uh, you know, they're not lying about it. And if they are like Volkswagen, then they get the shit kicked out of them. They get billions of dollars in fines. Volkswagen was lying about EPA standards. What happened to them? You know, somebody on Instagram is lying about having a 22 inch waist when it's really 27 inches and saying they can give that to you. Nothing happens to them. They're totally good. Yeah, sure. For the record though, the Italians lie about horsepower all the time. They've never gotten the smoke. Because the cars are too fucking beautiful. <laughs> I was going to say, you're going to get Jeff excited talking about cars. Oh, yeah. We're, we're going to sidetrack. Uh, no, I do want to <laughs> ask you a question kind of along, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, some of the disbelief I got. So uh, we were sitting at a dinner one time. This is when I kind of mentioned to Hayden and some other people. I was watching one of your videos at the table, basically. I'm not going to lie. And I said, hey, there's this dude. He calls out people, so-and-so. You know what you do. I don't have to explain it to you. Um, and a couple people on the table are like, oh, no, that person has too much time on their hands, tearing people down, whatever, who cares? Um, do you give everybody you are about to do a video on, do you DM all of them, giving them a chance to own it? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, I, I, I put them in, like, the savable category or the can't be saved category. <laughs> Okay. And like Sam Canato, oh, let's go. If I DM him, it's to fuck with them. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you, Lydia Knoll, the fake, the girl who faked cancer, I DM'd her, but it was literally the cat and mouse her ass. Mm -hmm. I sent her the video, and I was like, "Hey, I figured out that you're faking this shit. A bunch of people have speculated on it. I'm gonna prove it. And here's the video." And you know what she did? Blocked you. Within five minutes, she goes to her profile, takes cancer out of the profile, changes her profile name, and starts deleting captions. Mm. She deleted like three years worth of cancer captions after I sent this video to her. So I actually edited my original video and I added that at the end. And I was like, hey, I told her I was gonna do this and look what she did. She was running away from it. Right. And uh, a lot of people told me that was probably the most powerful piece that I presented was like, I told her, you know, I have a friend, Joe, he, he just, uh, he had cancer, he did chemo, he recovered from it. And we were eating dinner a few months ago. And I was like, hey man, what if I came at you and said, hey, you're faking cancer, what would you do? And he pulls out his phone and he goes to his my charts and he pulls out like 4,000 oncology reports. And he was like, I would just show you this. It scrolls and it's like a fucking Rolodex into the, into yeah. the Neverland. I was like, oh, well, okay. And it was before I posted the video, I was like, I'm not sure, you know, I don't, I'm, make me more comfortable with this. Like, how would you prove me wrong if, and I was like, okay, well, if I post this video, then 10 minutes can go by and she could show, you know, one oncology report, literally anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, that never happened. She literally just disappeared. No, yeah. no, hold on, just, hold on. Wait, wait, no, no, we have to say what it really was. She was posting about PRs while claiming to be in chemo the same day or some oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was uh, she was sponsored by a big company, and they they actually were the ones who came to me, and they're like, yo, we don't know about this girl. We know you look into this type of stuff. Could you figure out? We really hope she's not faking this, but like, could you figure it out? And they sent me. She had like this doctor's an email that a doctor had sent to her, and first the thought was, wow, this is kind of a HIPAA violation. You know, this yeah. doesn't make any sense. Why would a doctor be sending you? a gmail you know from a gmail talking about your condition he was right. like you're not gonna make it you're not gonna pull through like it was this fucking crazy shit he was talking <laughs> about an l6 vertebrae which i don't know if you guys are are familiar but there's like less than 10 percent of the population most examples that have an l6 vertebrae like it's <laughs> not a common thing like she was just spouting off all sorts of crazy shit in this email and uh there were a few other points where i could isolate that this was probably made up and she sent it to herself and i talked to her whole family her whole family tree. I sent them out emails and texts and Facebook messages. And I said, hey, I'm doing a story on bodybuilders that survived cancer. I wanna to talk to you about your sister, Lydia Knoll. And all of them gave me the same like, my sister doesn't have cancer, what the fuck? Wow. And some of them knew that she was a con and they were like, yeah, this is a sensitive topic in our family. We don't discuss it. If we start asking our questions, she runs away, please no. Whoa. And I'm Holy like, shit. Well, well, it's good you uh you did your due diligence with your uh with your friend there because that's some pretty high stakes. You don't want to accidentally flame somebody who actually has cancer online. Everyone's screaming at her she's just got out of a chemo appointment. That'd be terrible. 
you have no idea sometimes i get these stories and i'm like damn like i'm sure but then it's like no i'm waiting for another level of sure because i don't want to be wrong and, right. and so far i haven't been wrong in a story i've done i'm sure it may happen in the future but it would that that's a tough one that one i, I sat in that story for a really long time because i wanted to make double triple quadruple sure that you know i wasn't doing the wrong thing and you know she what pushed it over for me was I reached out to a lot of girls that she was coaching and there was a common theme. They all were cancer survivors who are currently undergoing some or any form of chemo. And wow. I was like, wow, like she's pretending to be a cancer survivor, taking advantage of cancer patients. That's and they were looking at her like, you've got the secret sauce. You know, how are you training and hitting PRs through chemo when I can't even leave the, the bed? And yeah. all these girls believed in her. One of them actually hired me. And she's doing phenomenally right now. She's awesome. She's like, you know, in recovery and, and she's getting lean and she actually wants to do a show and I think she's going to pull it off. But nice. it just broke my heart. Like she's, you know, to, to, to put it out there, oh, I'm a cancer and lying about it. Okay. That's, a, that's one level of hell, you know? And if we dig down deeper, closer to the earth's core, you got, you're lying about cancer and stealing from cancer patients. Uh, that's tough. Like, that's, yeah. That's yeah, all the that's, strikes. That's nuts. And so when people talk about, oh, my page is petty, I have, I have too much time on my hands, this, that, and the other, that petty shit that I post builds my platform. So when I get a Lydia Knoll, when I get a Sam Canato, when I get somebody that's really fucked up, I, I have the people paying attention so I can have an impact on it. Yeah. Sam Canato got banned from every good gym in Dallas because everybody knows he's a creep. Can you tell and, that uh, story quickly for those who haven't well, heard it? What about the? Can you tell that story of Sam Canato for those who haven't sure. heard it? <laughs> Sam Canato is a. Uh, is a coach uh, from Dallas, Texas. He actually just went pro, and he was he would have his female clients check in completely naked, and there was this whole social engineering way that he would get them to do it, and he would lie to them, and he'd say, "All oh, my other clients check in naked." He would reply to their check ins with these explicit, weird sexual comments, calling them sexy, this and that, and the other. He would have clients come into the supplement shop that he worked at go into the bathroom and he would take their check-ins with them completely naked on his phone. He, uh, he propositioned multiple of them to be sex, uh, friends with benefit, sex partners, uh, all sorts of crazy stuff. He was a huge racist. I got multiple texts of him calling black people the N word. He's just a, a lunatic. He's got a restraining order from his ex-wife, which whatever, you know, that who knows what the story is there, but it all kind of stacks up to, he's not a very nice person and absolutely a sexual predator. So, yeah. Wow. And crazy. then so you you sent messages out to the gyms that he went to, right? Yeah, yeah. And what was their response? Well, uh, Destination Dallas immediately canned him. They, they took his membership right away. They were like, fuck no, not in our house. There's a gym called Precision. They were one of the first ones to take him down too. They were like, no, we don't want that. There's a gym called Recess. And they played games with me, but they eventually, you know, saw it my way and they, they got rid of his membership. Did you do a live so with now them? I've, I've, what did you say? Did you do a live with them on Instagram? Yeah, that was the one I went live okay, with. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, the, law that and order, the, the law and order piece, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Just get so off they, the screen, uh, they've man. They've been banished to, uh, you know, he's been banished to LA Fitness. So that's where he's training at but, right now. But he's calling it something else. He's, he's post he posted it's 24 hour fitness yeah. but like it's a fucking LA fitness I know it's, I know it's an LA fitness yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to throw you off the scent huh he's uh, I mean I don't know why people think that like they're gonna do this and I'm gonna miss it some way it's like you were messing with the guy that dug into your shit in the first place like right. I'm gonna look into it I'm not gonna be like oh Sam's at 24 I'm gonna go after 24 now it's like no I'm gonna make sure that's a 24 before. you know what I mean like come on yeah. Sam do you think that your uh your experience in getting a law degree has made you better at this i i mean part part law degree but honestly uh, i was on the college policy debate team in undergrad and that is i think that's probably where most of my crazy insane man life experience came from college policy debate is not like whatever you think it is it's like four people screaming at each other and interrupting each other and not even talking about the topic and just being petty as fuck. I made a kid take his shoes off once in a round because he was doing a, uh, a an argument on why animals are just like people. And I was like, motherfucker, you're wearing leather shoes. Take your shoes off. And I made him take his shoes off and throw them in the in the dumpster in the garbage oh, in the corner. That's amazing. It's a it's a petty ass place, bro. It's, it's a petty petty king place. 
And uh, as a follow up to that, what's the deal with everybody uh, always saying you don't have a law degree whenever you get in some sort of conflict with them? Because I, even in the shorter period of time that I've been following you, I've seen you post it a few times. There's like, there's there's a few canons that have come up and they recirculate. And it's like my favorite, the places I'm the most comfortable in. It, it's criticisms of me. Uh-huh. It's, he doesn't have a, a he, he's a bum that doesn't have a degree in anything. And it's like, well, I, I have like multiple degrees. I have three <laughs> degrees. So, uh, you know, okay. And then they're, oh, he doesn't even work out. And so I'll post videos of me like benching 405 or like squatting 500 for reps and crazy shit like that. And uh, and then they're like, oh, he he doesn't have a job, and this is how he makes all his money. But it's like I coach like 120 athletes every month. Like it's, it, I really make zero dollars. <laughs> I get like 300 bucks a month from Instagram real views, and I give it to St. Jude every month. Like I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do with 300 bucks. Like if if that whole month worth of effort and all the research got me 300 dollars, and I was counting on that to survive, I would find something else to do. Like it doesn't really pay that well. <laughs> Has uh, the platform that doing this type of content has created for you helped your business? For sure. I don't even have to market anymore. I get mad people on my door. Just I don't even post clients that much. If they're doing a show, I'll post them. But like, I just get people in the door because they're aware of what you know what I'm doing, and they they're like, I fuck with your thing. I know you're real. I want you to coach me all the time. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. And I mean, you know, we're uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but we're doing an award show. The Goobies. Yeah. <laughs> The Goobies. It's going to be December 6th in New Braunfels, Texas, which is between Austin and San Antonio. It's about 30 minutes from either. I just put a deposit down in this crazy venue today. We're getting somebody in to live stream it and do like a pay-per-view live stream. Did We're going to give away out? all these crazy awards. We got sponsors. Uh, if you guys know Forever Young, Las Vegas, The Clinic, uh-huh. and uh, Amino Asylum, they're both yeah. our headline sponsors. Like. Nice. You know, they're throwing some money around. We're, we're really doing it. It's going to be crazy. It's catered by Flavor Gang. It's going to be an event. Are you, are you guys in Texas or where are you guys at? Miami. Miami. I am. Fuck. Yeah. Well, you got to fly. I mean, you got to fly down, honestly. <laughs> I it's going to be a tuxedo that. event. What's oh, the date shit. on that for, for anyone who wants to go see it? It's December 6th. Uh, I mean, we're giving away all these crazy awards. It's like the award show that nobody really wants to win. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, at the end of it, I'm going to put all the awards in boxes and like I background check anybody I do a video on, so I have their address. So I'm just gonna <laughs> mail all these fuckers out there like shitfluencer. We got one, it's like the golden shovel award, like whoever dug their hole the deepest. Actually, this may just be a Sam Canato roast. I don't know. <laughs> you know yeah, it, I was gonna ask, is like movie. you know, there's best picture or whatever. Is it is the is the and you might not be able to say this. Is the final award gonna be like biggest predator, best predator? It's going to be the Golden Turtle Award, and that's going to be the worst influencer for 2022. It's Sam Cunado. <laughs> it's going to be t- it's going to be tough, but yeah, it's probably. Dude, Sam. The, wait a minute! I've already figured it out. This man is doing the Goobies in Texas. Sam is in Texas. He's going to walk into his house. <laughs> so he's going to put the I'm going to send invites. I, I will invite, like, if these people want to show up, I'm going to send invites. I'll get security too, but I also will send invites <laughs> if they're going to come down. Oh, I, I doubt anybody's going to want to come, though. There, I mean, there's a few that, like, I've done stories on, and they're, like, super friendly about it, and they're like, whatever, I don't care. Well, you if they want to come get an award, you know? You went to Greece with somebody you exposed. Oh yeah, we went. Uh, her name's Mercy Mini Beast, uh, Mercy Andrews. She is. She actually qualified for an Olympia, right after I did a video on her. So no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but she's awesome. I did a video. She DM'd me. She was like, I "Yeah, I just need to do better, huh?" And I was like, "Wow, like that's that's refreshing." And I was posting on my story how I'd be in Greece and I wouldn't be available for you know check-ins and all that stuff. And she DMs me and she's like, "Hey, we're gonna be in Mykonos in Athens. What days will you be there?" And I was like, oh, and these days, and I'm thinking, like, does this girl want to, like, kill me or, like, I guess to find out? No. She's there with, like, five girls, like, five 20-year-old girls. They're, like, on this big girls trip. She rents this beach cabana party and uh, invites us. And so it's, like, me, my girlfriend, seven attractive women. It was, like, the best day, honestly. (laughs) That's awesome. She was super cool. They partied with us. We went downtown the next day. We got dinner. It was uh, a time. It was really cool. She's like, you know, that was, I was like, wow, I, I expected totally exactly this experience to, of somebody that was like, oh yeah, you know what? I probably need to do, do better. As soon as I did a video, she wasn't mad. She didn't say fuck you. She didn't block me. She didn't slander me. She didn't say I was wrong. She was like, yeah, I did do it and I probably shouldn't do it. And uh, I don't know. I just love that. I love when people are accountable for stuff. I was just telling you guys about, yeah, I made a mistake once on my page. 
And it wasn't like I just deleted it and hid and ran away from it. I was like, yo, I made a mistake and here's why. Yeah. You know, I could have deleted it. Nobody would have ever remembered that that video even existed. Yeah, yeah, just own your shit. People move on real quick. Literally. Yeah. And and then if you're Sam Canado and you just dig, you know, just keep digging to the core of the earth, everybody <laughs> will remember him. His, he went pro and then two weeks later, nobody is talking about how you went pro, bro. They're all talking about how you send your PP pictures out to people that don't want them. That's it. So um, on the last podcast we did, uh, I don't synthol came into the conversation and uh i i don't know a lot about it but i said yeah i think this guy sam cunato uh was because hayden said isn't it illegal in bodybuilding i said i don't think so i think it has to be like limited not too obvious and i it's, said so there's really like nothing that's kind of illegal in bodybuilding but if the judges take note of it they're gonna ding you for it so what happened with sam cunato was he did i think it was north americans or usa's was the first show he did and he got second place to a, a kid named Brandon Baird. Brandon whooped his ass yeah. because Brandon was in shape. Brandon has better shape than him. And Brandon's delts were not full of oil. So when you're looking at Sam, he had like these points coming out. It's overfilled with oil out of his shoulders. And I didn't know Sam that well at this point, but I met him at a show once. And uh, he's going crazy on his stories about it. I watched the show. I watched the stream. I thought the judging was perfect. I would have had Sam in third, actually, not second. I thought second was kind of a gift for him. And uh, so I DM'd him, and I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I talked to one of the judges, and they, they what they said was that you had a little bit too much synthol on your shoulders. Let that die down. Show up the same way. Be in shape, and you're going to win your card. And he goes off on me. He tells me I'm the peanut gallery. He told me I've never been into a gym before. I don't know anything about training. And that my favorite part that nobody cares about my opinion and it'll get me nowhere. And it was just funny that my opinion and what I thought destroyed him like six weeks later. <laughs> that was, that was like a, oh, it was beautiful. And, so, and that interaction know. was totally before you knew anything else about him. <clears throat> yeah. I, I didn't know, like somebody had told me about Sam Kanata before by name. And so I had a few screenshots of somebody talking about their coach, Sam, a Cuban guy named Sam. And I didn't put it together that that was him until much later when somebody directly came at me and they sent screenshots, including the profile. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I looked through my archives. I had uh, a couple screenshots from, I, you know, the other screenshots that I posted. And I was like, holy shit, that's this guy. That's this guy. I was like, damn, I didn't know that. Cause I met him in person. I didn't think anything of it. He was like a little weird. He's like kind of an awkward guy in person. You know, he's like very like, like this the whole time, just like fucking like, ah, ready to go. Damn, this guy's a little odd, he's a little off, but like, you know, nice enough. He was getting ready for a show. He was about to compete that day. So I was like, I mean, a little too much halo or something. And then uh, then I saw all the screenshots and I was like, no, there's really, really something wrong with him. Oh, I get that. Sweet justice. I'll show you the peanut gallery. So <laughs> what, said, what sweet, did you say? Sweet justice. I'll show you the peanut gallery. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know, he's done. Two hundred thousand people saw that video, which for me is a huge video. Like it's it's a, a huge video. It's actually amazing the amount of impact you've been able to make with the size of account that you have right now. Yeah. Like it's crazy yeah. that you're getting companies like First Form to change their policy. Well, first to even to a, a, address you, like for them to address anyone is a big deal, you know. But to yeah. address you, you have with sub 100K on on uh, Instagram, you know, your videos get a ton of interaction. And I think maybe what is so powerful about what you do is that your following is so in on it and so passionate. So it's like you don't really need the numbers when you, you have these people who are just like, I don't know if they're super fans or you know if, if they're, Dude, they're 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 drinking the goob Kool Aid. Aces. It's a I cult, love really. The people that follow me, I don't even <laughs> want to call them fans, but they're like they're crazy, man. They're they're like so. If I post a charity, they're like like that. I like just <laughs> fucking crazy. Just spread it out. If I post somebody that I don't like, they're like mm, the cracker in the knuckles and shit. Like they're the polar, beautiful, crazy, like crazy good, crazy bad, whatever it is. They're not just like casually like oh you know they're not like a like and scroll type of. Okay, no, you know, double click, yeah, yeah. scroll on. They're like, they'll leave a comment. They're crazy. I'll get like, you know, 500 comments on a video, which is like crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And they're all, you know, talking mad shit about whatever it is. Or if it's a charity and I post, they're all reposting it and go crazy for it. Like, so I, I don't I, know why. Like, I don't know why I attract that sort of 
you know, user base, but uh, it's, I, it's super helpful. I think it's because you stand so passionately for something, right? Mm. It's like yeah. when it, when you're down the middle on everything, then you have people your your following is going to be just down the middle as well, right? It's like when if you when you look at politics, right? It's like who who's the most famous political commentary you know talking heads it's the people the that are yeah the people that are not so left or not so right i think it's kind of not to say that your position is is nuts or anything like that but just because you're passionate about something i think that that brings in other people and also people want to stand for something as well and if you give them the ability to help do that and feel a sense of purpose then i think you know they're going to be a lot more bought into everything that you do and I think a big thing of it too is, and I've I've had this happen to me too. It's like everybody in the fitness world has been ripped off by another fitness person. Sure, I think everybody, or in some way, been deceived or otherwise lied to. And it's like it, the, my my the target market is like somebody who's been conned in the fitness industry, and that's all of them. You know, it's it's <laughs> that's a, an arrow that hits everybody right in the head. It's like, oh damn, yeah, me too. You know, every every single person. You know, some of the stories, maybe you know, like the same Canada one. It's like, damn, everybody can rock with the a sexual predator, but just somebody who's fake in the fitness world. It's, we saw it with, if you guys know who Potato Shop is no, from way back that? in the day, he was like the first big exposure of a fitness company. And that, no. that was- Care to elaborate? It was uh, 2012, 2013, like forever ago. He was me before me. Okay. And uh, oh, okay. he brought down the original Shreds company. You know, he, Oh, he I knew about the Shreds story. Okay. Yeah, it was Devin Physique who was one of their athletes. He didn't go after the company, but he went after like one of the- the athletes and he was like yo this guy photoshops and it was a huge thing and i think that was the first time where people were like damn people edit shit online <laughs> wow. i mean he did have a crazy years, disease. 10 years later man people still doing it wasn't it his like photographer the guy or a guy who was doing the editing that ultimately like gave all the proof to expose him is that the i think so i, th I think that was it because they had they didn't see a site like me where they broke down you know an edit they just sort of had here's the original and here's the and i rarely get a chance to post an original and an edited that's like a, a privilege when you get that like that's like a if i get an original photo of some shit anybody out there is edited i'm posting it no matter what <laughs> that's a story uh i just click up in the top right sorry there. Drew, one second yeah okay. good. so i lost my question oh you've had um You've had instances where you've had the edited photo uh, that the influencer posted. You've had the photographers confirm with you at times, right? Like the original photographer? Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of the photographers, for one reason or another, like totally rock with me and they respect it. I think because they're annoyed when, I mean, you think about it, like what they're putting out is their art. Yeah. And their art is being manipulated by a fucking cheap ass Facetune filter. It kind of annoys them. And so I have a pretty good relationship with a lot of, a lot of the photographers where I'll I don't want to say who it is, but like I'll DM some of them and say, Hey, can you send me the original of this? And they'll usually, you know, they're usually pretty happy to supply it. Uh, so long as I don't use it in my video. But what I, what I do do is I look at it and I'm like, okay, this guy's cooking his delts and making his head smaller. And you can look at the photos and figure out where he is making the edits. And then you just go look at the other photos. And now you've narrowed it down from an entire photo, his entire body to just a small portion. And you can kind of see the technique and, some of them are a little more intricate than others. Some are very, you know, silly edits that make no sense. You know, some guy was shrinking his hands for some reason. Like, <laughs> like the forearms bigger. <laughs> Just insecure. Yeah, I mean, side. I think that's probably what it was. But I was like, this uh, is elaborate, bro. Yeah. <laughs> elaborate. Jeez, <laughs> like, God. Do you ever do you ever worry about in like the current state of cancel culture in society that? sometimes the punishment that these people get might not fit the crime just because your following is so passionate about what you do? Um, I mean, it, it's always a possibility, but a lot of the times the people that are irritated with them weren't rocking with them to begin with. You know, it's like, oh, you know, you lost all of your customers that are following me, which was none of them. You know, it, it's more just exposure to something bad that you're doing. You know, all the, my profile is like 60% male, 40% female. It's like, oh no, bombshell loss, you know, probably no customers at all. <laughs> it's just, we put, we put people onto your bullshit. And, uh, you know, if they do lose somebody from, if they do lose a client or do lose a customer or do lose a sale because what they did that is true was out there, I don't, I don't think I could lose much sleep about it. If I have a disagreement with, you know, something morally that they did, and it's you know up in the air. I'm never going to post it. I don't give a shit about that. Sure. But it's in this instance, hey, you're a fitness brand. 
you're editing your photos. Here's an exposure on that. Some people care. Some people don't care. So, so kind of on the cancel culture uh, line, um, when the, the, the girl put out, she took the fake tweet that wasn't you, and then she put some other stuff, innocuous stuff you posted, and she tried to basically cancel you, um, and then you returned the favor and got her fired. And some people know, you know, people know that know me, they know that I, I rock with you. Um, and they're like, oh, well, that, you know, that wasn't cool. That was like posting, you know, her job and he got, you know, he got her fired. And, and for a second, they got me. I was like, huh. But then I realized she tried to take away your livelihood. Yeah, that, that was a, a hard lesson called fucking around and finding out. <laughs> I mean, I, I have the capability to be much meaner and everybody I think does. And you measure it, right? A Photoshop video, whatever. Sometimes I say some snarky, jokey shit, but I'm not coming for anything. It's like, yo, this is what you're doing. That girl, for instance, manufactured photos, made it look like I tweeted something that was racist, which I never tweeted to begin with. It, I, it wasn't even my Twitter account. She photoshopped it into a Twitter stream of something that I had posted and pretended like I said a racist tweet. She posted it and was sending it to my clients. She was sending it to people that follow me and she posted it on Reddit. So it's like, wow, I had the ability to lose a lot if people looked at that and believed it. So, you know, to me, it's like, no, you want to take this from me? I'm going to show you exactly what that feels like, but do it in reality. Mm. And so, you know, 360 billion people called her the CEO of her company talking about this. They had to turn their phone lines off and, you know, she got fucked for it. But, you know, she could have easily not lost her job by not being human trash for somebody <laughs> to for, for there to be such so little about me that you have to manufacture fake stuff for me to be the bad guy. Like I'm doing a pretty fucking good job and straight up fuck you. If you got to make it up, you know, like I'm not, the gloves are off there. They come from my job, my livelihood. And I'm absolutely going to be a savage. You know, if she for thought sure. I was a savage in the videos, she learned a whole new level of, of John Dorsey. <laughs> well, especially in this day and age, I mean, just even inaccurately being labeled racist is a career death sentence in, in most settings. So it's like, Literally. and it's like, man, I'll own anything I've ever said, but that shit, I didn't, it's like, I didn't even say it. Oh, and she yeah. was sending it to specifically black clients and black followers of mine and saying, Hey, wow. I don't know if you, and what I found out after I posted the video revealing that she had done this was a lot of my followers had seen it. They felt a type of way about it and they didn't know how to ask me about it. Mm. And I had, probably a hundred DMS from people that were like, wow, I did see that. I got fooled by it. I didn't know what to say, but I wasn't rocking with you for a minute. Cause I didn't know, you know, wow, I thought that that's was scary. Real. It's scary that people will, will just believe stuff like that, especially because if I remember correctly, the display picture of that account was not even yours. And the, the handle of the account was also not the same as yours. Correct. Wasn't it like a 12 year old kid in the, it was some kid from Scranton, Pennsylvania that had a similar username to me, but not my username. Did he actually make a racist tweet? Yes. Oh man. Did he get canceled? I don't know who he is. Uh, I mean, clearly nobody, get was, canceled when you're nobody 12? was offended by the tweet itself <laughs> to go after this kid. They were offended because they thought I said it. Right. That was, oh, you know, that, like, that, that tweet was pretty awful. Something about, Big lips are only bad on black people or some shit. It was pretty. It was terrible. some fucked up. It was like some. It was just one of those like uh, you know some Mountain Dew drinking fucking. It was not a. Yeah. It was not something. Rock that star, I would want flat to brim hat wearing <laughs> motocross enthusiast. <laughs> yeah, literally, but it was like, come on, man. You know, I'm I'm not a cancel culture type of guy, but I would take things if you know they try to take from me, and that was. Me to, you know, let me reach out and touch it. Let me, you know, let me make your real life a little uncomfortable for the thing you tried to make me uncomfortable about. So, yeah, yeah I think that's fair. Yeah. And if I don't do that shit, you know, my shit's kind of public and out there now. If I don't do that shit and somebody sees that and they got away with it and they're like, oh, wow, you know, she got to do that to him. Let me try it. Let me try him too. No, people are going to look at that and be like, uh, actually, no, let me not fuck with that. Let me not even think about fucking with that. Unless it's real, then yeah, come for me. If I did something bad and you want to post about it, come for me. But nobody ever, nobody is ever in the history of ever going to try to manufacture some shit about me because they saw what happened to Ann Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a oh. minute. Wait a minute. What happened with... Like, where did Ann go? Well, uh, there was there's actually an addition to the story that I'm gonna post at some actually, point. But goob, I'll tell goob, you goob. I'm really sorry. People might not know the Ann Seymour thing. Can you sum it up a little bit? That's what I was about to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So Ann Seymour is a per a, 
do we call her a hater? Is that the, the terminology? Go with it. I don't know what the kids are saying these days. <laughs> so Ann Seymour is the, is the woman that made this fake tweet and was circulating about me. She is also, to go back to what we talked at the beginning, she is somebody who was posting on Reddit Jim Snark. So uh, she's she's an interesting person. But uh, where was I going with this? Ann Seymour. I mean, you're just giving the backstory. Yeah, so... Uh, so uh, not only did she do this whole fake racist thing, but as soon as I posted her out there, and this happens with every story I, I do all the time, I make a post about them and then I find something else out because they're all dirtbags. You know, they're never normal people. So Anne Seymour was getting into women's inboxes. She, she's gay, which is, you know, cool. Good for you. Uh, you know, who cares? But she was getting into women's inboxes and sending them these nasty messages and these really creepy things like, could you squish my head between your legs? Could I give, could you give me a piggyback ride? Can you squish me? Like just this really weird shit. This one girl, she sent her like half a dozen drawings of her to where the girl had to block her. She was like, this is really fucking strange. And so it was like all the strange muscle worship, like fetish shit. And she was sending out to these girls unsolicited. Whoa. And this one girl was like, I have a boyfriend. She was like, oh, it's fine. You can just, you know, this crazy, weird, <laughs> pervasive, pervy oh, shit. And I have all those screenshots and I was going to make a video on it somewhere in the near future. But I figure I'd let her get reemployed before I got at her again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Round two. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. I mean, if, there, if there's a bunch of stuff out on the internet about her now, that might be tough, huh? <laughs> She's got to find well, yeah, a job. I mean, I'm sure. If you, socials. If, if you Google her name, I'm sure yeah, something comes up. She's a she's a shit though, just a horrible person. And she did all this shit in the middle of one of the biggest stories I've ever done, which was Roger Wynn, the pedophile. Mm -hmm. I broke that story, and like one day later, maybe it was the same day that that story was running. She posted this fake racist tweet on Reddit, and then she was circulating it to a bunch of people, and like was doing it again. I guess she'd been doing that for a couple days or a month or whatever, but she did it again. Mm. And was and was like reinvigorating it and i came at her and i was like are you trying to like get me canceled the day that i do a big story on a pedophile like do you rock with the sex predators or what and she got super <laughs> offended about it and told me to go fuck myself but then i found out that yes she does rock with the sex predators because she is one <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my god man oh the right like has have you ever talked to roger directly uh, well, I send him nasty voice messages once a day on a burner account. Uh, I tell him <laughs> to go fuck himself, and then I'm going to rip his head off and shit down his neck and stuff. And, you know, just, like, <laughs> things like that. And one of these days, I'm sure he'll reply. Uh, but he reads them. You know, they're all on scene, so <laughs> wow. you know, maybe he's collecting data or something. I have a funny <laughs> idea, which I'll tell you guys about, and I'll pray that he doesn't watch this podcast uh, involving Roger. So, <laughs> so we have the Goobies coming up. December 6th in oh. New Braunfels, Texas. And Roger Wynn, who, by the way, we'll talk about Roger Wynn in a second. The cliff notes on him, 31-year-old man, pre preying on a 15-year-old girl, asking about the size of her tits, asking if she's a virgin or not, asking if she can come meet up. She's 15. He told her he's 20, just a creep. Big guy in TikTok in the fitness world. I ran a story on him, and he lost all of his sponsorships. Gymshark and MyProtein were fucking yeah. with him, and they're no longer fucking with him. I was thinking that I could make a fake supplement company. And I could contact Roger Wynn and I could offer to have him fly down to an event in the States and comp his ticket to come <laughs> be at a booth on December 6, 2022 in San Antonio, Texas. And then when he gets there, I could have somebody drive him to the Goobies and give him an award in person. Wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> could, could you fitness expos and all this other stuff you know you, you do actually have the booths out in the hallway set up well, the yeah. fake set up the fake booth and let him like be there for a minute and then all of a sudden it's like no no roger you've got to come into the auditorium they want to give you something it's a very special because we'll we're gonna have gooby branch to everyone we'll have to like move it and make a yeah you're right that would be i mean i'm gonna try to do this guys i'm 100 percent gonna try whether or not he reads through it i don't know but i think he may be desperate enough for a sponsorship that if some company in the U.S. is like, yo, we'll comp your ticket, pay $1,000 for the day, just come through. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to cancel his return ticket, but, you know, it's like, it's fine. <laughs> I'll at least make some of my money back. But that would be beautiful to see him walk through the door and to receive his own gooby in person. Oh, tell him it's tell him it's a, it's a black tie event. So he has to show up in a tux and everything. 
<laughs> He'll like show up like he's ready to accept his award. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be the best dressed in the room. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to make this happen. It really, the, by the way, the reason it's on December 6th, is that's my birthday. And I thought, what better <laughs> this year than to just clown on the fitness world on my birthday? I, uh, I was I wondering year, why I was that. Do it up. So that would be the best birthday present I could ever ask for. Wow. To get to meet Roger Wynn in person. I wow. was wondering why it was on a Tuesday. That makes That makes all the sense. So. Yeah, and also the Olympia, or not the Olympia, but Nationals is that prior weekend. Yeah. So I figured give people two days to get home, and then because a ton of people that live in San Antonio and Austin are going to be at Nationals, sure. and then they're going to be done competing and they want to go have fun, but they're not going to come on a Sunday, you know, the day after they've competed, they'll, they'll still be you know down in Florida. Yeah. So, make just makes sense. Oh, I didn't realize it was in Florida. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. That's that would be cool. fucking amazing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> So what's your what's your overall goal or mission through your platform, through your coaching business, through everything that you do, your presence online? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I literally do this to entertain myself. Like I put shit out that I think is cool. And if somebody thinks it's cool, that's great with me. But like I'm not really looking at trends and looking at what other people are doing and trying to, you know, be influential in any way, shape or form. It's like I think that this shit is morally correct. I think that you're morally bankrupt if you're editing I think it should be this way and I could be wrong in a lot of things. I could be right in a lot of things It's just, you know, it's, I, I do what I want. That's, that's kind of it. You know, the things I want to see in the fitness world is, is kind of what I do. I remember a time, you know, 10 years ago where it was a lot different. You know, we only had a few companies that were shit bagging around and, and doing the stuff and most of them were pretty legit. And uh, I remember that time and I kind of liked that a little more and I would like to see that again. So that's mm -hmm. kind of my mission is, you know, let's restore a little bit of integrity, a little bit of dignity into it. You got, you know, people now they're bouncing from sponsorship to sponsorship to sponsorship. You used yeah. to have guys that would ride for a brand for five to six years. That was their whole career. Oh, yeah. They'd stick with one company and you'd know that's them. You know, I, you could identify them by it. Yeah. And well, that's, that's the, fucking, uh, that's Dan Green and Animal. You know, I mean, that's, uh, what, that's, or yeah. uh, Frank McGrath and Animal, actually. And Animal. Yeah. Literally, right. think of, uh, you know, think of these guys that you can identify. Wow, they were with one brand for their entire, the entire time they were doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, What's his name? Rich Piana was with Newton until he made his own brand. Yeah. And he even had some athletes that were, you know, they were legacy athletes. They're there for five, six years until he, until the wheels fell off. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Well, I, I, like, I think you, you know, you don't have a goal with it and that's cool. Um, but with this current generation where it's no longer watching TV to see the Nike ad, yeah, the Reebok ad, and then like later on the Under Armour stuff where everything was on video and yeah, of course they were touching up color and stuff like that, but those athletes looked like that right nowadays where everything is just cheapened down and watered down and it's Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and whatever. That's what these, this younger generation looks to. So if it's the Photoshop generation and, and they're trying to achieve these unachievable physiques, powerlifting numbers, whatever, that there probably needs to be somebody that's checking the industry to help, help the children goop. Help the children. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, a lot of these kids were, you know, they're born with one of these in their hand. That's it. And yeah. They're better at this shit than I am. You know, they're editing all crazy. I actually just today finally cracked a way a lot of these TikTok kids are editing their Instagram fo profile photos and their Instagram photos. So I got a new technique that I still got to refine it, but I think I can reverse some of the edits they do in a pretty cool, tricky, novel way. Mm. And so more on that in a little bit, but, <laughs> you know, they're. It's, it's really what they, you know, we grew up doing a whole different, I don't know how old you guys are. I'm 31. So 43. 30. Yeah. So you guys, like, when I grew up, I didn't have one of these when I was 10, 11, 12. It was fucking, you know, watching TV on the big CRT TV or going out the fuck outside. Like yeah. it wasn't yeah. the internet. You know, I played RuneScape, but that was in the living room for, you know, one hour at a time on the, on the internet. <laughs> right. It wasn't like internet 24 seven in your hands. So they have a, a different view on things. And I don't know. You see all these accounts that look exactly the same. You see Chris Bumstead gets a mullet, and everybody has a mullet. Like they, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of lost kids that yeah. they don't. They're not forced to go figure out what they are. Yeah, they're just sort of shown what they could be, and they're like, "Well, that works. I'll get a flannel. I'll get a mullet, and uh, I'll start competing in bodybuilding. Right. And yeah. Edit all the fuck out of my photos, just like everybody <laughs> else. You know. <laughs> that brings up, if if I can ask this, the whole um, bodybuilding versus body. Okay, you're a bodybuilding coach, right? Uh, can do you have any quick comments on like the body showing versus bodybuilding? Like maybe people should stop showing up on stage when they're not ready. A little off topic, but I just want your opinion. For sure. I mean, yeah, there's some people that are absolutely 
they're, they're not, you know, if Instagram didn't exist, they wouldn't be competing. If TikTok didn't exist, they wouldn't ever think about competing. There's people that absolutely love the sport and they're crazy psychos that want to be huge and shredded and, and do the thing the right way. And there's people that love the attention from being huge, shredded and doing things, you know, the way that gets you there. And uh, yeah, you say body showing versus body building. I'd say more people are body showers. They want, look at me, look at me, look at me. They don't actually want to win. You, know, you have to love the, the annoying part of it, which is, you know, from the beginning of this podcast, we talked about it. Like imagine bodybuilding is an MMORPG. It's like, you're literally just <laughs> killing chickens all day, bro. You're harvesting the grain, you know, you got to go mine. It's, it takes forever and ever and ever. It's not an, it's not like a, an easy glamorous thing, but they look at all these photos online. These kids make it look glamorous. It's like, nah, that, that looks glamorous because the dude set up a photo shoot and edited the absolute piss out of it. Right. Like, it's yeah. not that fun. I right. mean, I think it's fun, but it's not like this entertaining thing that's always fresh. It's like sometimes you're like, I don't want to fucking be here. And I competed for years and half the time I didn't really want to be in there. But it was, you know, what you do because you have a goal and you finish it. You don't quit. Right. Yep. Yeah, I think the, the one of the biggest things that kind of aggravates me is the uh, showing up and when you're the only one in your weight class and uh, you're talking about you want it. Happens in powerlifting too. You're the only one who's a submaster 242 raw with knee wraps. Best in the world. Bar. Yeah, and I'm yeah, and I won my weight class. I show yeah, yeah, show the class. You're the only fucker who competed. <laughs> there was a, a kid who the I just did him his name is Jake Collins. He's big on TikTok. Roads and, 230. Uh, I actually DM'd him and I was like, bro, did you edit this photo? And he said, no. And I said, do you pinky promise? And he said, yeah. And I was like, dude, okay. And so uh, I, I did the whole thing and I go to his page and he's talking about how he just won a show and how he beat guys that were bigger than him. And I'm looking and he's the only guy in his class. And he was in uh, middleweights, which is up to 175.25 pounds. He's posting about how he's on the road to 230. He's posting about, oh, I'm 215 pounds. Like, your class cap's at 175 pounds. He was probably 10 pounds under the cap. <laughs> so he's like a buck 60. And he's like, yeah, I'm 220. Oh, yeah. How the fuck? How the fuck? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I guess it's it's it goes both ways, right? The internet's like opened the door to all these people to exaggerate the truth or straight up lie, but it's also exposed them to a very new and special kind of justice that actually, in many ways, hits a lot harder than the old school way that was refined to being face to face with someone and them telling you off. Now it's like you get exposed by you or somebody else on the internet for saying you're 230 or whatever when you weigh 160 pounds you're gonna there get was, a lot of people shit talking kid, you. uh when i was in uh, law school i went to the undergrad gym all the time and i like i knew everybody there because you know it's like a, a gym and there was this kid that would like lie about everything like he was like i eat twelve thousand calories a day he's like <laughs> maybe 175 pounds like just a small kid always wearing like three sweatshirts and shit <laughs> and uh one of my friends one of my best friends from college steve he tells this story all the time but this kid, he like comes in and he was talking about how he's like 215 now. He was telling this big story. I was around and I heard it. He's like, you know, I was sick this week, so I'm down to 215. And his, his name is EJ. And I walked over and I was like, EJ, we're going to the fucking scale right now. <laughs> and he was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And he like terror in his face. And I walk <laughs> him over to the, we have this digital scale. There's like 10 people surround because they heard me say it. I said it real loud and they're like, fuck this kid. And they walk over and he gets on the scale and it says like 179. Oh, and I was God. like, EJ, you're full of shit, boy. And I'm laughing about it. And he's like, oh, I just haven't eaten in a while. And I think this scale's off. I'm like, okay, bro. <laughs> he was that kid that were like, maybe. his dad worked for NASA. And he just ordered a brand new BMW. And he was a crypto millionaire. And he had eight girlfriends. Like, he was just, the kid wow. couldn't tell the truth about anything. So I knew a guy like that in high school. I think we all did. But <laughs> lying about the, I don't understand lying about the weight. We can see you. Well, dude, I, I knew this guy that like, <laughs> He just got off on lying so much that he would like go to Burger King for lunch and just like tell you he went to Subway <laughs> just to pull one over on you. And you'd be like, oh, cool. Is it good? And you'd be like, yeah. And then he'd just be happy about it. You'd be like, ah, that <laughs> idiot thought I ate a Whopper. <laughs> I really thought that was he, he went to Burger King for lunch, but said he went to like STK steak.
No, no. it didn't matter. It, it, went did, fast it didn't even have to be food. good, dude. It didn't even have to be good. But like oh this guy, God. his uncle fought in the UFC. Yo, he, his like go to like lie was his any, every, anything to do with his uncle. Yeah, his uncle was the most interesting man in the world. Uh-huh. Fought in the UFC. Was in the CIA. Did like you know? But just, again, just did everything. It was right. unbelievable. He had six full time careers at the <laughs> yeah. same time. Somehow. Yeah. How was, do, but wow. why why lie? And 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 this goes back. We can tie it back to Goob. Why lie about things that are easily find outable? If that that's not a fucking word, but who cares? Yeah, like I can just if look you, up if your uncle's in the UFC. Exactly. Just <laughs> can look up Google UFC fighters. Yeah. yeah. It's like don't tell me you're a world champion powerlifter. We have open powerlifting. Yeah. It, we I can mean, figure this out. If anything, like this, you know, we were talking about how this kind of ruins this kid's noggins, but like this should show you not to fuck around. Yeah. Like, yeah. When I was a kid. Yeah, you could lie about anything. Yeah, I was a fucking ass. My dad was an astronaut. Nobody could check that shit out. For sure. Now it's like, I'm going to look at all the space missions. I got yeah. photos of them on Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah, dude, back then, and even if you got busted and you screwed up your life, you could just move to the next town 15 minutes over, start all <laughs> over. No one's the wiser. Yeah, but, but back <laughs> then, I mean... back, back in our day, if you said I was an astronaut, Goob would have to go back to Encyclopedia Britannica to A and find out who the fucking astronauts are. Now we just go to Google. Like, yeah. I mean, but it is. It, yeah. it, it opens the door, like I said, for a lot of fuckery, but it also <laughs> checks you equally as hard, you know, if you get caught, if you, which nowadays well, a lot of people do. It's an even playing scale. It's like you can be over here on all your fuck shit and I can be over here ready to expose your fuck shit, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> I mean, views are views, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, so, so what was your first? Okay, I know where I started with Goob. Where did you start? What was the first video you watched? I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure the first time I ever saw him, you showed me him. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, but I know then you caught up on the treadmill or something. But. Yeah. No, no I, went, I actually went through a day where I'm sure I've forgotten a lot of it, but I, I went through a day where I fell deep in the rabbit hole and I'm pretty sure I watched every single video you've ever done. I just got hooked, you know, and because I, I didn't get it at first. And then I was like, you know what? Jeff really likes this shit. I'm going to I'm going to give it a real look. I did two, three videos in. I was just like, <laughs> and then I realized I was watching in reverse order because I was going down the feed. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like getting the end of the story first. So I went all the way to the bottom and then I started. I <laughs> checked it all out and I was hooked, man. I was hooked. It's really entertaining stuff that you do. So I'll, I'll tell mine and then, and then we'll wrap. Um, it's kind of funny because I watched my first goo video standing next to one of our coaches here who go figure. We call your doppelganger. He legit looks like you. So I was like, yo, I just, uh, I, I got sent this video by this guy who looks like you. Let's watch it. And it was the, I think the first person, the first girl you did who had the naked girl, tr- uh, changing in the background. Oh, oh I, saw that uh, I remember her. Um, yeah. Miranda's or something. Yeah, I think Miranda. it was pre- right before. Sky Fit. Yeah. I think it was right yeah. before Lydia. Or re- yeah. But so that was my first. Uh, yeah, she was a total shit. It's funny because I, I look at like, I'll sometimes scroll down and the views on like my really old videos still go. Like people still watch them all the time because they'll find my shit like today. And, then, and it's like, it's not like I just did one video. They're like, wow, there's like 300. Yeah. Well, yeah, because your content like withstands the test of time, right? It's like if somebody went back like five years in my content, they'd be like, oh, cool. You just squatted 100 pounds less. Like it didn't get, <laughs> it doesn't get more entertaining back there, right? The best stuff's at the front. <laughs> you know, with yours, it's pretty par for the course. You're always exposing something that's, that's you know, that's... Uh, shit <laughs> you know is and equally as shit no matter what <laughs> what yeah. point in time it's at it's true man yeah, yeah. it's uh it's in, it's it's crazy though because once you put it out there i'm like this is there forever yeah <laughs> I, I better I'm be sure correct it's, you know? i'm sure it's nerve-wracking <laughs> well man we we uh we want to be sensitive of your time and uh we appreciate you being on um thanks for bearing with us with the technical difficulties and all that <laughs> It's plug time, so where can people find you? Uh, you know, coaching, uh, your Instagram, anything you want to plug, the goobies. The only thing, if you're watching this, that you should pay attention to, fuck my Instagram, fuck my coaching page. Nobody gives a shit about that. But at official gooby awards on Instagram, you should follow that shit. You should show up December 6, 2022 in New Braunfels, Texas, and be ready to party. It's his where, birthday. Um, what's, what's the website for that? 
There is no website. It's uh, just an Instagram page. Uh, the website, it's probably going to be run through my uh, okay. training website, which is boobytraining.com. That's where we're going to have the live stream. But uh, all the information you need to know is going to be on at official Gooby Awards on Instagram. So that was Goob U Training, not Gooby Training. Goob U Training, correct. Yeah, it sounded I mean, like you Gooby. could go to boobytraining.com if you wanted. I don't think you're going to find anything. <laughs> no. It'll be Sam Cunato's coaching page. <laughs> you may see some stuff that you should pay a premium for. Him. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not. I'm not plugging his fucking thing. <laughs> Me either. Fuck that guy. All right, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, hey, thank John. Thank you guys for having me. You guys are amazing. A class act, and I love your studio. That's uh, I need something like that. That's legit. <laughs> hey, you gotta Appreciate come visit it. sometime. Come down to Miami. Hell yeah. Yeah, anytime. Uh, I'll do it in person. Appreciate all you guys. Man. All right. Later. See you.